Hello everyone, Cecilia here. Um, today I've invited new ISAP ambassador Sangtuk Badesha. Badesha. Um, he's a distinguished professor and Xerox fellow um, at Purdue University College of Engineering. Thanks for joining us at Sangtuk today. Thank you. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to speak to the community, uh, ISAP uh, community. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. Um, could you introduce yourself to the ISAP community? Yes, um, I, uh, as Cecilia mentioned, I am a currently a distinguished professor at the uh, Purdue University and the main campus in the College of Engineering. Um, um, and that's after I retired from Xerox, Xerox Corporation in uh, Western New York uh, after uh, almost four decades, uh, actually 42 years. <laughs> Um, and uh, those 42 years have always been in the um, fundamental research part of the, the, the Webster Research Center I've been here in designing um, these, the hardware-centric uh, offerings, um, uh, being a part of the teams and, 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 and the like. Um, when I told my managers here um, that I am, I have accepted a position at Purdue. Uh, the manager basically, um, but he, uh, he showed some su su surprise, basically saying, hey, what is that we are not doing for you? Uh, and I said, well, look, it's an opportunity uh, and I want to cycle back to the academia. And they basically, basically said that, uh, is there any way we can still keep you associated with the Xerox Corporation? Um, and, um, you know, jokingly, I, I said, well, you just have to pay me a little for a cons consultation. And also, um, it would be very helpful that I still keep presence, some presence here at Xerox. By the way, I'm sp speaking from my Xerox office here. This is my this is my um, uh, Xerox office, and um, he was very generous. So um, I have the full privileges, all the one that you had when I was a full time Xerox employee. Uh, now as a consultant, uh, I do ten hours a week consultation uh, because that's what Purdue allows to a paid consultation uh, ten hours a week. So that's what I'm doing here. Um, my education wise, um, I have, I always say that I'm more educated. I have two bachelors, a master's, uh, a PhD, all those four degrees from India, from Punjab University. Mm -hmm. And then I um, came to UK, uh, University of Anglia to do a postdoc uh, and when I was there, the professor basically said, um, money is only for two years. And uh, the British system allows to do a second PhD. I think he had a motivation for me to work hard and produce, produce more. <laughs> and I took that challenge. And yeah. within two years, I was able to get out with a second PhD uh, with all the pieces, stuff, and all the coursework which I had to do from University of Sanglia. And then also during that time, I met my uh, now wife, um, um, and um, um, we met, got married. Uh, and then I did about nine months postdoc after the my my PhD at the University of Leicester. And um, from there then, it was a time to make a decision whether to stay there or um, you know, move on to do something else, something else. And I was offered a job uh, as associate professor from Punjab University where I came from, from in India. Uh, and my bride uh, grew up in London. So um, it was a decision for both of us. And she basically said that, um, I don't want to go to India, and I was not uh, too keen to stay back in, in, in England. Um, there were a lot of reasons at that time. 
so we decided to then hop over to um, USA. Um, there's nothing, no planning. It's just, okay, we're not going to stay here. Let's go. go. And um, so I we came to then uh, with a, uh, a job offer from Rensselaer Polytech Institute, RPI, uh, in Troy, New York. So I taught there for four and a half years in the chemistry department. And then from there, I joined uh, Xerox Corporation uh, in the research center. And that's where I spent 42 years and retired from there. Amazing. Uh, and I, I'm also known, um, um, you know, both uh, nationally and internationally uh, as uh, an inventor. I have the highest number of US issued patent to in the entire history of Xerox Corporation uh, to one, one individual. So I have uh, now uh, over 271 issued US patents. And those are also um, filed in multiple foreign countries. Um, and and uh, I always joke that companies making uh, you know, billions of dollars from my inventions, but I'm still poor. So, the thing is that for part of employment, always is that you sign on a dotted line that everything you do belongs to the, the uh, your employer. And that's true, by the way, that's true for in the academia. Mm -hmm. It's not only for the corporation. Um, so um, I am also a, a member of the National Academy of Engineering, uh, which I was inducted uh, a couple of years ago, and also uh, the, Nas the National Academy of Inventors. I'm a fellow of that. Um, that was also you know, about a year, year and a half ago. Uh, and I um, also um, have a, a a, a doctor of science DSC from uh, one of the institutions here um, uh, in New York is Clarkson University. Um, I was asked, I was honored to ask to uh, give a, a keynote um, um, at, at the graduation, and then they also conferred a doctorate of science. Uh, me. And this is for my efforts to connect both the industry and the academia so that was the recognition so that's a that's a long long back background um but um um you know that's uh, uh and also one thing more by the way that i'm a fellow of the uh institute of electrical um, uh, uh, um engineering technology of the uk actually i was the first person first uh foreigner actually to receive a uh, Mountbatten medal from the IET. Uh, and I serve on their, uh, their evaluation you know, for the fellows and for the awards and, and the like. So very active um, because of still some, some, some um, you know, relationship with the UK. Uh, my wife's family is all in, in, in England and we go there quite often. Uh, to 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 you know for an occasions and also vacations and the like. Also, oh, that's enough. What 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 else? Um, um, any anything else? Um, I think that's a great sound talk. I think your profile just a really you know a typical representation of the ASAPers because most of the ASAP community comes from the intersection between industry and academia. And then, you know, your accomplishments in both in industry and then academia truly speak itself that you're uh, one of the great, you know, eyes up as well. So welcome to the community. And I would love to hear more about your motivation for becoming an eyes up ambassador. How did you get to learn about eyes up community? Um, and then what made you decide to join as an eyes up ambassador? So um, when it comes to um, hardware-centric offerings. Um, Xerox, for example, uh, we sell printers um, and, and um, you know, and the service is a part of that. You, you probably make not too much money from 
you know, the boxes, but the money is in the service side of it. So that that was that was one. The other one was that during my tenure here, um, Xerox had been dabbling into acquisitions, different types, different printing technologies like Pectronics, the you know the inkjet based versus the toner based, which we you know Xerox has pioneered, and the name Xerographic Process. Um, and then uh, a time came when they acquired a services company called um, um, uh, Affiliated com Computer System, ACS. And an ACS um, was a basically financial, a, a, a services company, as I mentioned, all kinds of services. So um, the, 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 the shift from um, the hardware service systems to then services, that I, I saw, and uh, therefore the, the transition to actually look into, expand my own horizon to see what, uh, what how can I um, learn and also help to design some of these service offerings. Luckily, I've been a very good friend over the years with Jim Spur from IBM and members of his team. Everyone knows uh, <laughs> I tell you, he, yeah. he he's, uh, actually he just gave a talk to my class, which I'm teaching at at uh, Purdue. Great guy and his team, of of, of course. So we actually uh, partnered um, um, to actually start a curriculum for a degree program. Um, this is service science, service sciences and, and management engineering SSME. Um, we, uh, I brought resources, both the, the money and, and the other, my colleagues, uh, and then with Jim's team, we actually started the program at, at multiple universities. And the starting point, one, one starting point was at North Carolina State University, NCSU. We actually um, helped them design the curriculum, design the 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 the, the course, the syllabus, uh, help and 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 help monetarily, um, and as well as then help them to secure more money from the NSF. Mm -hmm. And and they start the degree program, and that also then got expanded at RPI because I had my relationship there. Penn State, um, you know, and 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 both national and international in Pisa, Italy, and you know, so Berkeley here uh, on the West Coast, and, and number of those more. There's a long list of those where we partnered. Um, so you can see that um, this transition for learning and enabling the hardware-centric offerings. Mm -hmm was the motivation and then of course um, if you um it's, it's 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 all about as you know relationships it's all about the networks absolutely and, and using each other's networks you know i we both actually joke joke uh you need to use network of networks it's not just my network but then my networks and and his networks and gives a multiplier absolutely. so that was I, th I think that was the that was the the motivation, as well as learning, and I have we have stayed uh, in touch. Now Jim is retired from IBM. I'm retired from Xerox, um, and I last time I told him that when I when we talked that I am actually trying to start a a program in services science. Mm -hmm. at the, the the business school at Purdue. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also, I have a, um, a, a courtesy appointment at the business school, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the school of business um, in their strategy department. So I have some say, so um, more to come. It's, it's just, uh, you know, uh, I'm new still. I, I always joke over there that I'm new to Purdue so I can say silly things and get away with it. But um, um, the, the fact is that the growth, if you look at it, is uh, hardware versus 
services. Yeah. Um, you know, service side is the one that shines. Hardware uh, has been um, transitioning, part, you know, out of the country. Rather than, it may come back, but but it's been not uh, transitioning. So that was the motivation, learning, um, and 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 also then, you know, what you do, you expand your horizon. You you know, you start thinking out of the box, and those so are the motivations. Yeah, because I was struck by your mentioning of hardware and the services. And I think that, you know, the evolution of hardware towards the services, I think that is the, the fundamental thinking of service terminology. And then a lot of people, you know, a lot of eyes up first actually, you know, following the research streams of service terminology and then also how we can maximize value create value co-creation and yeah. services, right? So cool. Um I also would love to learn more about, you know, obviously ISAP, we offer a lot of um, different sort of the activities where ISAP ambassadors can get involved. Um, would love to hear from you how you would like to get involved in ISAP activities. Is there any particular areas that you're interested in? You mentioned about the networking, definitely, you know, there's a networking aspect as well, but then also any other areas that you're interested in? So, so, um... I'm I'm going to um, try to bring some new thoughts. Um, at Purdue, um, you know, because of my background in in uh, innovation, innovation, and taking ideas from left hand through the processes all the way to the customer hands. Um, I the actually the university challenged me to design a curriculum, a course on intellectual property generation and management. And, and I said, I will do it, but it's not gonna be a legal. It's not, this course is, is not a legal advice for anybody. This is an inventor's view. Mm -hmm. You know, what works in the real world, people who are on the back benches doing stuff, how do they think? How do they come up with ideas, and how do they get these ideas documented, and then move them through the internal and external processes? So it is a four. That is a three credit course which I'm giving at the moment, uh, and um, and and that that's one thing which I would um, I would suggest that the processes in the service side of it. Mm -hmm. How do you actually um, um, generate ideas in this area? Mm -hmm. And that may be somewhat, somewhat different from the hardware, by the way, mm -hmm. but, but basic fundamental principles are same. Mm -hmm. So I would actually, um, um, you know, like to start actually a, a you know, involvement and ask others to join. Look, I'm not the only one who's in the industry, and and but you know there are others on the ISIF, both the, you know inventors in the on the in the both academic and, and and industry side of it. I like to join. I like to invite them to have a kind of system where we actually recognize the 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 these boundary spanners, I call them, um, who help in connecting dots. Um, um, and, and then maybe an award system also, you know, there are multiple uh, awards in excellence of science in, in innovation. So that may be, that may be one of the, the areas I would like to expand. Um, if as, 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 a, as a, may not be a new idea, but I like to I like to put a focus on in addition to some of the things which are already going on. Like for example, um, we have um, you know the you know I'm looking at the the, the, the website. Um, there's a digital twin side of it. Yeah, we have at, at 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 Purdue we have a very active program on on digital twins. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, we read the panel discussion on digital twins, and then one of the eyes of ambassador is running the program as well in Switzerland. And so, so that's one. And actually, Jim talked about it when he gave yeah. the talk to, to my my class. 
The other one is 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 the the this this um, uh, innovative transformation at scale. The it's you know it's it's one thing in in the real world is that you have ideas. You know, yeah, you say, well, here's my idea. There are a lot of dumb you know organizations who do not appreciate what the idea is. But ideas are um, plenty of them. But but um, what it takes to those ideas through the system to make progress because there are increasing level of resources as you move from the left hand to the next step to the next step to all of your customer hands. Now this famous thing, Valley of Death, you know, the, the, the lot of them just these ideas, you know, just die in the middle uh, because uh, the customer demands are always different than what, what you think uh, your ideas are. So I, I, I think digital twin is one, certainly, or a, and or the, the innovative transformation to scale. And the, the third one, which I just mentioned, that I like to actually champion um, this, this um, innovation innovation generation, the, the, the intellectual property generation management through the processes, ex sharing experiences with the asset community rather than lexing down to them, you know, like the, the, the attorneys will do, then you need another attorney to figure out what the attorney said. These are the practitioners sharing these ideas. And then, then if there is a success, why not have an award on, you know, um, uh, we can call it a boundary spanner award or something like that. I'm, I'm just throwing, you know, stuff. Definitely. I think there must be a definitely an opportunity for sharing your expertise and knowledge as well. Because, uh, you know, this is a community for life, lifelong learning. Um, so definitely, you know, I think a lot of folks will benefit from, you know, the IP process you've mentioned, and then also the invention in general. You know, like, I've heard that, like, the patent process can be very sort of emotionally taxing, especially, you know, in the beginning when they're, you know, drafting an application of the file and the file it. So I think if you share your knowledge and you know, experiences in that, that would be also very, you know, useful to many folks as well. Um, so before we close the call, um, is there any other things you would like to share with the ISAP community if, if you want to share any final thoughts? Yeah, I... I think the, the we actually in you know there, there are always you know you, you need more time you know uh, there's not there, there are only twenty four hours a day right and three and sixty five days we we always are so busy and we always wait for others to come to us for help. Uh, my principle in life has always been, and this is how actually I've been, I think I've been successful in generating intellectual property, but not wait for somebody to come ask for help. If you know somebody needs help, go ask them if they can, if, if you can uh, offer your help if somebody you know need help rather than that person, uh, our team's coming to you for that. So I I, I think that's a that's a that that's one thing which I I've done very successfully and I I, I think building on that little part um, at the end of the day what's going to help the the entire system in the country and and both in the industry and in uh, in the academia is how do we develop these young generations? What do we teach? How do we teach them? What are the, you know, how do we teach them the trends? And I can assure you that the in the in the industry, we follow the trends. And and this is how we actually put our offerings out. Sure. So I I, I am I'm I'm, I'm I, I think the industry folks can volunteer to get in more involved with the with the academic institutions to develop this workforce for the future so that it's a win-win for you know when you have them back they are ready to start producing you know the output 
yeah. rather than you have to train them. So I, I think that's about the workforce of the future. The other one is that this, this thought that Jim and I are very familiar, which came out of um, uh, Berkeley from uh, um, um, Henry, uh, Henry Chesborough, and I've been, by the way, champion in Xerox on open innovation. Um, and and it, is, it, it is so effective in the hardware side of it. But looking at now the, all these processes, the hardware centric, along with the services, use of open innovation, I think we need to actually propagate that thought. Uh, we, we need to hammer it as an effect to bring it to fruition um, because there's a lot in it. There is a lot in it. And rather than just a closed loop, I'm going to do what I do. And if I tell anybody, they're going to steal my ideas, that those times are gone. It, it, that doesn't work. The third thought is that because I'm involved in, in, in these academies, um, but I also do a lot of service to the, the National Research Council are these academies, they are, you know, I, I serve on a number of these, these committees as a volunteer. That's great. And, and I think those, there are a number of goals and these uh, academies do ask for help, meaning bring in the expert opinions to those, some of those boards, there are 15, 16 boards. And I could champion that actually, bring it up the ISIP community. And every time I am asked, to find some experts to help the nation, I would love to do that as an effect. So Amazing. those are the things I think. Um, I would love to delve more into the innovation, open innovation parts, but unfortunately we're running out of time. We literally have only two minutes left and then this video will go off. So um, I will probably find a way to organize, you know, you know, probably the panel discussion or talk around open innovation topic in the future. And thanks for joining us as on talk today. I mean, it was lovely to meet you. And then um, thanks for tuning in, everyone. And then we look forward to seeing you next time.